Hello there, my name is Jadesh Paniker. I work as a neurologist and I will be telling you about Fowler's syndrome and urinary retention in women. And I'll be taking you a little bit through the history, how we came to Fowler's syndrome, to try to explain how not all individuals with urinary retention have Fowler's syndrome, and also set the scene for a holistic approach to the comorbidities that occur in individuals with fathers and how we assess these and something very brief about management. So problems with passing urine is not uncommon. There was a study published a few years ago called the Epilep study that suggested that nearly one in three of women in a large community-based study reported sensations of incomplete bladder emptying and, and a poor flow to their urine. However, going into complete urinary retention is less common. And the problems could be either if the bladder, the muscle that lines the bladder, what we call the detrusor, is not contracting, or there's some sort of a blockage at the outlet of the bladder. Now, this is a picture of Claire Fowler, and several years ago, in the late 1980s, she led a team of doctors and urologists and urologists where they were sort of studying women coming into retention and found that when the muscle at the outlet of the bladder, known as the urethral sphincter, was sort of assessed using a test called an EMG or electromyography, they found that there was an abnormal signal in this group. So this is just showing you the abstract of that paper, but essentially in their original study, there were women who were in complete retention, and also women who had difficulties with emptying their bladder, so not necessarily in complete retention, what we call obstructed voiding. And, and several of the women in their study, they did find an abnormal signal called an EMG in their urethral sphincter muscle. And some of the women had polycystic ovaries. And what is now known about this condition that's called Fowler syndrome is that the problem is at lying at the level of the outlet of the bladder, specifically a muscle there called the urethral sphincter. And in that urethral sphincter is, is poorly relaxing. And this results in a high tone. And so the pressure, if recorded using a test called the urethral pressure profile, is found to be high because the muscle is not relaxing. Now, in some centers, one can measure the volume of this muscle using an ultrasound. And in several women with the condition, the volume of that muscle is increased. So what we know about this condition is that primarily it is a problem with uh, urethral sphincter muscle relaxation. It affects women. So we've not come across men who have a similar EMG findings. It occurs in a wide age group, but generally with between the ages of 15 and 30. The typical presentation is of a woman who is in complete retention and holding more than a liter of urine in their bladder. Often they might not be aware of the extent of retention because they might be lacking that urgency to enter the bladder or, or pain. Women with the condition realize that by straining or bearing down with their tummy muscles that it doesn't help with emptying the bladder. And women who do catheterize often report a, a sensation particularly when removing the catheter as if something is gripping. Many of the women have an association with other gynecological conditions, such as polycystic ovaries. And importantly, however, is that the women are investigated for other urological and neurological causes, and they've all been excluded. So we don't know precisely why this occurs. There is in health something called a guarding reflex, so if the, the bladder needs to empty, the sphincter muscles are, are contracted, the pelvic floor is contracted, and it's sort of a pro-continence mechanism to prevent one from leaking. And what we feel is, is happening in this condition is there's an exaggeration of this reflex that happens. Now, whether this is because of some influence from hormones such as estrogen, such as it's been speculated, of late there's been a theory that it could be related to the release of, of what we call endorphins, which are the body's own opiates. And this can sometimes result in a similar pattern of bladder dysfunction. The, these are all possibilities, but we, we don't entirely know why this involuntary sort of contraction of the, of the urethral sphincter muscle occurs. 
Now, I would like to, however, point out that not all urinary retention with women is due to Fowler syndrome. A bit of work that, that was done in the department a few years ago, we found that only around 40% of women, when they were sort of investigated, we, we found went on to have Fowler syndrome. And in the majority of women, we found that the cause for retention could never be established. Now, this is a very busy slide. But essentially, I'm just highlighting that with neurological conditions, one can also have uric urinary retention could be a presentation, particularly if you have a spinal cord problem or a peripheral nerve problem. And so any individual who presents with retention, they should undergo a neurological assessment to exclude anything else neurological that could be contributing to their retention or causing their retention. We talked about sort of medications earlier, particularly opiates and and there is a relationship between pain, Fowler syndrome, but we know that the medications used for pain, such as, such as your opiates, for example, tramadol, morphine, oxycontin, oxycontin they, can, they can cause problems with an impairment in the ability to feel the bladder getting full, but also difficulties with actual emptying the bladder. Both of these set of symptoms are commonly reported by women with Fowler syndrome. So in anyone with retention who presents to us, we, we do take a, prop, a, a thorough history and review the medical history and the medications to see if perhaps there are medications that could be sort of responsible for the bladder problems. Now, as alluded to a bit earlier, there are other conditions that can overlap with retention. I mentioned polycystic ovaries, but there's another bit of work from the department that has shown that other gynecological pathologies such as endometriosis seems to be more prevalent in women with Fowler syndrome control compared to women without Fowler syndrome. We don't fully understand the, the, the reason behind And we also are come across quite a few women with Fowler syndrome who report pain in different regions in their body, back pain, leg pain, pelvic pain, or generalized body pain, fibromyalgia. Once again, it is something that we've observed, but the nature of the association is unclear. And so individuals can have musculoskeletal pain. Sometimes this can be in the context of joint hypermobility syndrome or EDS. Some women can have bladder pain syndrome or interstitial cystitis, or there can be just chronic pelvic pain where there isn't a, a, a definitive sort of a cause that we could find. Now, what we have also observed over the years is that, is that women with Fowler syndrome and can also report problems with, with mental health issues. This is a picture of Ingrid Howitzer, who is on our medical board. And Ingrid was in the department a few years back, actually, where she sort of looked at the, 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 the case records of, of individuals with Fowlers to sort of see other sort of conditions they might be having and, and found that nearly one in two women were reporting unexplained chronic pelvic, uh, chronic pain, but also nearly a quarter of women were reporting sort of unexplained sort of functional neurological symptoms, just a loss of consciousness, a weakness of the limb, a loss of sensations, which could not be explained from a medical perspective. She also found that a third of women had some other mental health issues, such as anxiety, depression, and OCD. I think it's worked like this that has made it very clear that, you know, when we see an individual with Fowler syndrome, you know, it's not just managing the bladder alone, but importantly to manage more holistically, to consider the different care mobilities or other conditions that are occurring in association and, and treating the person as a whole. More recently, Caroline Selai, who's a psychologist in the department, prospectively looked at different sort of, sort of mental health issues that women with Fowler's, or women with retention report, and we found very high figures of, of anxiety, depression, and some history of psychiatric illness in women who presented to us. I think I would like to sort of just make a special note about a history of, of, of trauma in childhood, which is something that, to be honest with you, I think as, as clinicians probably have failed to to recognize, and perhaps not in all cases it might be relevant, but it, it does get us thinking and talking about what, what is the possible relationship between these mental health issues, between childhood trauma, such as sexual abuse, and also uh, with, with bladder issues, such as retention, and the relationship with other coexisting symptoms, such as pain.
Mm. And in this more recent piece of work in the department, Caroline also found that more than half of women had some other sort of functional symptoms, such as bladder pain or fibromyalgia or irritable bowel symptom. And uh, we also found that that there were also functional neurological disorders as well. PTSD is something that uh, that we 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 uh, have failed to recognize over the years as being an important link with other medical conditions. And so there is an association, but once again, how that relates to the urinary retention is something that we're currently researching. There's also, I did allude on, upon sort of sexual trauma, and it's something that is sometimes the elephant in the room in a discussion with the, an individual with retention, or something that that isn't addressed and perhaps needs to be. And so what we strive to do is open a dialogue and, and, and I think this is sort of organizations like FSUK are, I think, are important it forms of sort of a, a platform where an open discussion about how, you know, how about factors such as sexual abuse should be addressed in, in the most sort of appropriate manner. When assessing women, we take a thorough history and women undergo tests such as urodynamics, they might undergo a urogynecological assessment to look for any other causes such as a pelvic organ prolapse. They undergo a neurological assessment as well. And they generally would undergo a pelvic floor assessment and ultrasound as well. Most women who are referred to the department would have had a cystoscopy to exclude any other cause for, for obstruction. The neurological examination does involve examining sort of what we call the sacral dermatomes. These are the nerve roots from the tailbone that eventually make their way to the area between your legs, your undercarriage, what's called perineum, and also the back of the thigh or the gluteal area. Because women and men who have a problem with these nerve roots can present in urinary retention. Now, if we take a step back, women with retention may be presenting with just one manifestation of a problem with what we call the autonomic nervous system. So this is a, a component of the nervous system that supplies different functions that you may not necessarily want to be wanting to know minute by minute details of what's happening. For example, your heart rate, your blood pressure, you know, the, the, the pupil size. And so disorders of the autonomic nervous system can present to a urology clinic with problems with passing urine can present to a, a cardiology clinic or to an autonomic clinic with, with maybe or, uh, intolerance from standing up, problems with sweating perhaps, problems with sort of the ability to regulate temperature, problems with the bowels. So, so women who present with unexplained retention, we will sort of assess that angle to see whether the retention could be part of a more wider spread disorder of the autonomic nervous system. Now, this is just an example of a trace, the urethral pressure profile I mentioned to you earlier, and we measure the, the height of these waves, and, and there's a formula that we use to assess whether the pressure within the urethra is higher than what is expected for that particular age. EMG was the test that started the story in the first place in terms of Fowler's syndrome. This is involves putting a, a, a thin needle into the muscle around the urethral sphincter called the urethral sphincter. And so it's introduced sort of along the sides of the urethra by around an inch or two. Um, it probably sounds dreadful, this test, from the way I describe it, but from practice, I think most women tend to tolerate well with local anesthetic. A nurse who's with us who's doing the test. And it's quite useful to assess the, the urethral sphincter because we do hear a characteristic sound that perhaps women who are listening to this webinar who might have had undergone the test would, would might recall the sounds which are akin to the underwater recording of whales and sounds into helicopters. So a bit of an orchestra doing that. And during the test, we take women through the procedure, the findings, and then of course it helps in coming to a diagnosis. Sometimes Women will undergo other tests, such as an MRI scan of their back. They might be assessed from a mental health perspective. And also they might undergo further neurophysiology tests if we suspect that there's some neurological cause for those symptoms. In terms of treatments, there will be a separate webinar on sacral neuromodulation, so I won't take you through further regarding that. Essentially, it's similar to a pacemaker device that's inserted over the bottom and the wires from the from the, the battery that we call the electrodes are in our contact with the nerves that are 
emerging from the naturally occurring openings in, in your tailbone that we call the sacral foramina. And uh, one, one particular nerve root, such as the S3, the S4 nerve root is stimulated. In this two-stage procedure, we see if women respond in terms of avoiding functions. And if they do, they, they proceed to the second stage. And there is evidence to say that women with Fowler's syndrome do respond with a, a, a response rate of nearly 70%. And this is why we very much are, are, are geared around diagnosing Fowler's because we know that women with this group do respond better compared to women in retention who do not have the characteristic of Fowler's syndrome. It doesn't mean that women without these findings cannot be offered the treatment, but from what we call a prognostic a prognosis point of view, where we want to predict if someone can respond or not, it's always good before you go into this, what are the, what are the chances of response? And we do know that some women respond better to this test to, to sacral neuromodulation compared to other women. The other tr treatment, which is which is more recent and is probably not like which which, which is probably not as strong in terms of evidence base, but for which there are now several publications, is injecting the muscle of the outlet here with uh, botulinum toxin. So this can be either uh, by having a, a camera into the bladder called the cystoscope, and it's in the urethra, or it can be injected from within, and we call this a transurethral botulinum toxin. Or it could be either along the side. So in our lab, we offer this on the sides. When the needle goes in, it's injected into the urethral sphincter, and this is called a transperineal approach. There are several observational or open label studies that have shown that injecting Botox into the into this urethral sphincter can help with with the urinary flow and with improving sort of the post wood residual volume or the amounts that's left behind after 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 passing urine and so these are sort of some of the treatment options that are available so in this short sort of webinar on Fowler's syndrome what i would like to point out is that not all urinary retention is Fowler's and so we must you know women any woman in retention should be investigated from a urological a neurological cause, and perhaps even from a urogynecological cause if necessary before we conclude that this could be found a syndrome the condition is associated with a problem with the urethral sphincter not relaxing and from a a criteria that the medical board of fsuk has put together we can demonstrate this either by a, a test called urodynamics by urethral pressure profile or a, a urethral sphincter emg or urethral sphincter volume measurement not all women with fathers will be in complete urinary retention. There could be different degrees. So some women may be in complete retention, whereas others might have, may be able to void, but leaving behind some urine, what we call obstructed voiding. There are some effective treatments for this condition, such as sacral neuromodulation and botulinum toxin. And I would say probably the most important take home message is that I think we strive to treat the individual with retention as a whole. And so we need to sort of understand the other sort of conditions and medical conditions, other symptoms that the women are having, and, and provide a more holistic approach to managing women with this condition. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.